How is everybody doing? Welcome back to the SoCal Watch Reviews Podcast. This is episode 98. My name is Miguel. Uh, Typically, this is when I say my friend P. Ross is with me, but he cannot make it today. But that's okay. I got a very special guest with me. Uh, I've known this guy for going on two years, I believe. I I, I was a fan of his channel before I even had a YouTube channel. So he's been a huge inspiration for a lot of the things that I've done. And he is a fellow Hispanic... I guess more, more, more strategically, uh, or more specifically, Mexican, because uh, we are from Mexico. But uh, his name is Fernando. He has two channels: one in English, Todo Reloj con Fernando, and the English channel. It is collecting vintage watches. So with us and 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 joining me today, Fernando. Fernando, how's it going? Miguel, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you so much for inviting me. It's been a work in progress because I know we've spoken a few times. A lot and, of times. Uh, <laughs> yeah. A lot of times. And for <laughs> some reason or another, we haven't, uh, we weren't able to make this uh, happen. But you know what? It's happening. So it's yeah. a pleasure to be here. No, thank you so much. And and I know maybe one of the things that, that didn't really align or work out is the fact that you were in Chicago. So it was three hours ahead from California, but now you're in Texas. So it's only two hours. So that makes a huge difference. No. Maybe, Actually, no. Know. Chicago is still two hours. It's Central. Is it? Time. Oh, oh yeah. wow. Central Standard Time. So, you you know what it, what it was that I I was still working. I still oh. wa- uh, watches weren't a hundred percent of my job, and now Got that it. watches are a hundred percent of my job, I sit here in this uh, closet slash uh, office <laughs> all day. So, okay. So <laughs> I I got nothing but time now. You know, and and a break a break to uh, talk to my good friends. It's always welcome. No, I appreciate it, man. Thank you so much, especially the day before Thanksgiving. This is such a uh, treat. And, you know, they say we got to be thankful for for things in life. And I am thankful to the watch community and people like you for taking time out of your your schedule to come with me. I'm sure you got better things to do. But here you are talking watches and talking a little bit about your journey. (laughs) So, hey, man, thank you. No, thank um, you so, so much. So I know what you're wearing. I think it's beautiful. But why don't you let the people know what is on your wrist? I'm wearing, the light's going to reflect a lot. I'm wearing my Panerai, uh, Pam, Lu, Pan, Panerai Luminar, Pam 114. Love this watch Beautiful. with the white dial. The cheapest one Panerai has, but it's still with an ETA movement. Oh, and okay. it, um, you know, it spools back. Beautiful watch. Be, uh, the, the codes of Geneva. It's, a, it's just a watch that I, I love. And it's, it's not, a beautiful, it's a watch it's a that watch. I didn't have to learn to love, you know, oh, that, that, which is a, which is a big difference. I loved it from the beginning. When it's a watch that you have to learn to love, it's like, eh, you know, it's <laughs> it's so-so. But this watch, I loved from the beginning. So you hit a really good point with Panerai, right? So you mentioned the, the ETA movement, if I if I remember correctly and, and understand a little bit of what's going on, is uh, Panerai is introducing in-house uh, calibers. And a lot of calibers. people don't really feel good about it because – they they feel that uh, going up market and charging more money just doesn't make sense for Panerai, especially because Panerai is not what it used to be. So how do you exactly. feel about it? You know, when I bought this watch, and like I said two seconds ago, it's the cheapest Panerai there is. Okay. I wanted to start small. You know, I wanted to start with the uh, with the uh, non expensive watch, which was still you know thirty seven hundred when I bought it. That's, you know, that's probably, expensive. probably right now it's twenty seven hundred. You know, okay. uh, but but it, it it wasn't a world of money. I just wanted the experience of Panerai because I've never okay. owned one before. Got and uh, and, and when I bought this one, you know, I saw I saw the ETA, I saw the 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 way they work this movement, but. I've known of a lot of shady things that Panerai does, Panerai does you know, <laughs> yeah. so my, my, the, the best thing I could tell you, if it's not a glass pack, uh, glass pack, don't buy a Panerai. Make sure you can see that movement before, you know, if it's a solid seal uh, case pack, it's, you know, they might be hiding some, something underneath, you know, but if you got a glass yeah. pack, go for it. it. They're incredible watches. Yeah, I, I guess that's my biggest fear. I mean, I've seen Panerais that are a little big for me. I know there's different sizes, but my biggest fear is buying a fake just because yeah. you hear horror stories. You know, even Panerai themselves couldn't even tell there was a fake <laughs> at no. one point. Story, no. story has it, but uh, it's a nice watch, man. It looks really, really nice on you. I love it. Um, what are you uh, wearing? Really, oh, man. So I just did a review on that. actually shot some B-roll. Black Bay 58. Uh, there it is. Black nice. Bay 58. Um, cool watch. Um, 
I don't love it. <laughs> I like it. And I, I, I think it's a great buy and a great value. Um, I think hype has something to do with the reason maybe why I picked it up just because everybody's talking about it. It's a great watch. Don't get me wrong. But for me, what the, all the guilt is a little too much sometimes, all the, all the okay. gold accents. But okay. once they come out with a different colorway that really speaks to me, I'll probably sell this and buy that. Um, but the watch itself, I mean, it wears incredible. It's beautiful. Movement is, is keeps great time. Uh, you know, another colorway I think would probably do it for me, but I just don't want people to think that I'm bashing this watch because it's an incredible watch, in my opinion. It it's not a Rolex, right? So if you're looking for a Rolex, don't, do, don't, then you don't can't do, get one. Don't, don't do Tudor. Don't do yeah. Tudor. Don't do Tudor. Yeah. But if you're looking for a great quality watch, a tool watch, a tool watch, which is right. what Rolex used to be, I recommend this watch 100% because the prices are still really good. And as a matter of fact, I did not, Fernando didn't tell me to say this, but I believe you have a Black Bay for sale I right do. now, right? Okay. I do. And look at this beautiful box. This is Ooh. one thing you don't get this yeah. with new Tudor. The, you the, don't. The, I didn't get that. My, no, my you thing, don't get this. Yeah. When, when no. you open this up. Man, they didn't even include a strap with mine. What the heck? Yeah, they yeah, didn't. Uh, by the way, listeners, there, he has a, a, a pre-owned, right? Pre-owned? Pre-owned. 41? Pre -owned Black Bay 41? Yes. The ETA. The Ooh, ETA. The smiley face? The smiley face. I don't know if you could appreciate wow, yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, we could see it, man. That's beautiful. One thing that everybody could appreciate, no rivets. Oh, I hate the rivets. I hate what the, how they did that on the new I have ones. rivets on here. <laughs> I have no idea why Tudor went with rivets, but I guess they wanted to make it look more like a tool watch. More vintage. Yeah. Yeah. And 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 they do, you know, but even though I love Tudor, this Tudor does nothing for me. You know, mm. if you want to see a Tudor that does something for me, so and this is only for me. Uh God, I love this. This is a Tudor Ooh. advisor. 7926 what? from 1951. Oh my god. This is what makes it for me. Beautiful, wow. beautiful. Because they still make the advisor and it's I think retail for seven thousand dollars. That's insane. You know, but this it's it's just Man. so beautiful. And is that, is that is from your personal collection? This is uh uh a watch I'm thinking about buying <laughs> myself. <laughs> oh, I own okay. it, I own it, but I don't but but it's not mine. It's a business. So oh, wow. Did, did it have like a red second hand or does it have red it, in there? No, nope. that's it's an alarm. It's an advisor. Oh, so okay. Okay. See how it has two crowns. Yeah. One crown for yeah, the yeah. alarm and one crown for the time. So that is very the cool. red one. That's where you set the alarm. That is so cool. Wow. Isn't it? And yeah. This that's is what awesome. does it for me. Vintage is what does it for me. You know, that's, that's my real passion, but, you know, I know people want new. I know people want, uh, you know, modern. And I mean, you can't blame them. There's so, so, so many beautiful things in in the new market. You know that. Yeah. Why deal with old watches? Right. It, honestly, the in the review that I'm that I'm still working on, that's kind of the message that 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 I that my that my video has. Right. It's like, look, if you love vintage watches, like I love vintage watches, but you don't want to deal with the headache with the servicing, and you actually want to wear your watch without freaking out like i do then yes. this is great for you because you get the best of both worlds are you going to get some criticism from people yes are you going to be happy with the full rivets probably not you know nah, but whatever nah. i mean yeah you could change the strap <laughs> you could <laughs> but, but i, I kind of defeats the purpose of the of the nice bracelet but i i like it i mean at first it kind of bothered me with the full rivets but after a while what well, especially when you wear it you don't you don't, you don't really feel them, them anymore. You don't. You don't, don't feel them them. anymore. And and honestly, this bezel. I don't know if, if you got a chance to play with yours, but oh yes, oh yeah, does, that bezel's does, nice. Does your bezel automatically stop at twelve? Yeah, yeah, it yeah. has. So it, it runs freely, and and when it gets to twelve, you you kind of you kind of got to push the lock. It yeah, isn't yeah. that something really nice? Yeah, yeah, you no, know? for sure, for sure. And this and this is in a value watch within the luxury market okay mm -hmm. everything i say about value is within the i mean because right now <laughs> there, there is no value in anything right correct so, yeah um you know when you could get a tutor for four thousand dollars under four thousand dollars and get get even though not a rolex but get somewhat rolex quality they're a great deal 
Yeah. They're a great deal. And I mean, they have the DNA. They're owned by Rolex. I mean, in reality, they it's, it's like saying, well, I have a Toyota and a Lexus. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Great analogy. <laughs> yeah. Right there. You know, so, but uh, 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 right now we drive Toyotas, so that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> that's fine. But uh, all right, cool. So why don't we? So so people, I, I think with the with the words that you've been saying and, and and things that you're showing us, people can tell that you're a real watch guy and you actually know what you're talking about. But why don't you give us a little bit uh, of an origin story and what got you into watch collecting and into watches? Okay. Well, I was born into the business. Uh, my dad, an immigrant, he immigrated here in 1959. So he started jewelry in the, in the mid 1960s. Oh, and wow. I've been in jewelry all my life, all my life wow. doing flea markets, doing shows before wristwatches. I, if, if you want to talk to somebody that remembers when wristwatches, when Rolex was basically nothing, I mean, I'm the guy to talk to because Rolex was, it, it was a, nice good watch but it wasn't uh the the end all and be all you know because people were look as far as wristwatches the the yeah. very few collectors that were in the 80s or 90s for wristwatches they were looking for hamiltons they were looking for growing curbex they were looking for illinois you know they were looking for for 100 year old watches they weren't mm-hmm. looking for modern watches you know so uh pocket watches were the whole craze you know, my dad was a pocket watch expert. I know nothing oh, about wow. a pocket watch. Ask me what a size 16 pocket watch is, and I'll show you a shoe because I have no idea <laughs> what, what, what the sizes are on the pocket <laughs> watches. You know, so um, the, the, the people back then, that's what they collected. You know, real vintage uh, watches, not, not just Rolex. The community has changed 360. Now, it's a Rolex community, number one. You know that's that's what uh, yeah. drives the market, and um, and everybody else follows. But well, let me keep on. Um, so I grew up in the market. Grew up, uh, grew up at a flea market. When I was seven years old, I was in charge of straps, so I had to wow. uh, I had to ch- switch out straps. My 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 dad was doing so many other things, and my mom and my sister. So I was the guy changing out straps uh, cool. when I was seven eight years old um the jewelry for for a while then I, I wanted to learn to do watches so i basically learned myself how to do watches you know and uh, and i've been doing it ever since i only work on my watches i only do my pieces i don't do anybody else's pieces uh quite frankly anymore you know but um but yeah it's 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 a great hobby it's a great career you know and um and i'm i, I love it do you I remember love. your first watch my first, I actually just gave it to my daughter. Mm. Uh, the first watch I fixed. Okay, not my first watch, but oh, okay. the very okay. first, the, the very first watch I fixed, I gave it to my daughter as a graduation gift because uh, I, I thought I, you know, it was a special moment for her and something that meant a lot to her uh, right. graduating uh, from high school. And the watch probably it, it was it's an old Sada chronograph. But nobody knows the brand. Uh, a lander on 48 but that's the very first watch I, I ever i ever decided to take apart and put fully together you know but wow. as far as my first watch from from childhood I, I it was probably a seiko uh a seiko analog watch because back in 1981 if you wanted an lcd seiko they were eight nine hundred dollars right you know and back then the craze and i have one i happen to have one boulevard aquatron this really? was the craze when I was growing up. Oh yes, you had one of these, and and you were the man. You know, Volvo wow. Aquatron was the was the watch of the future. Nobody nobody knew nobody knew about technology back then. You know, so if you could have something that was running at a high beat and um, and use batteries, that that was it. That That's was so it back cool. then. Yeah, man, I've been doing so this cool. for a while. Yeah, no, I, I could tell, and I appreciate that because when I came into the into the collecting thing, collecting space, a little over six years ago, Rolex was already Rolex, right? And it was all about, oh, you can't get them, and this and that, and and I was like, what, what, what is this all about, right? And that's all I've known about watches, right? So yeah. to hear stories from you, from other people about Rolex, and say, yeah, they were good watches, but they weren't what they are now. You could pick them up, you could pick them up back in the day for maybe a few hundred bucks, like pre-owned, like. Um, yeah, they weren't. Back, they weren't what they are now. Back in the day, they were. They, no, I mean, let me show you another watch. 
and I was I, I have it here because I was I was telling my kids this and my kids are old. You know, my kids are probably older than you, but uh <laughs> this is um Dak Warrior Aqua Razor from okay. the early two thousands. So and I was telling my kids, I remember when I traded one of these for an explorer two. Straight no. up. Straight no. up. Yes. What? <laughs> Straight up. <laughs> You know, I had the Aqua Racer with beautiful brand new watches, and uh, the the guy ga- the guy gave me an Explorer for uh, Explorer Two, you know, uh, Polar, just Dang. straight up for for the watch. That's how that's much crazy. Rolex was. You know, that's, that's how much crazy. Rolex was, and it's it's a crazy market, and it's been a crazy ride. It's been a roller coaster, but it's been a roller coaster with uh, with the Rolex theme all the way up. You know what? So let me ask you because obviously I've asked a lot of people, but they always kind of have different answers, right? But you know the market better than a lot of people because you've been in it so long. What 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 happened to Rolex? Like, why did it become so popular and so unattainable? What 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 did it? Was it social media? Was it what what was it? Crazy collectors with a lot of money buying everything up. I mean, I think it was just YouTube because before before Rolex. It it would it had a big following base, but within within certain collectors that would trade between them, you know, and mm. and when social media came out and and you know Rolex Rolex it, you could say it's it's a it's a mid tier watch with uh, upscale PR, you know. <laughs> so th- it's it's what it is. It's what it is. I I'm not gonna bash Rolex. Because I've, you know, I've made money with them in the past. Now nobody makes money with Rolex, but uh, but uh, it's, you know, YouTube is what made them. YouTube, Instagram, definitely. Uh, now TikTok, I guess I don't know. Uh, <laughs> but wh- whatever, whatever is evolving, you know, and and Rolex has a chance to be there. They're going to be there. Yeah, that's a fair assessment, and I, I think you're absolutely right. I mean. I, I was into watches, but it wasn't until I saw YouTube that I got really into watches. Way you know too much, I mean, you know, and, and like way too much, like on the deep end. <laughs> and it was yes. all thanks to TGB, yes. but but uh, yeah, man, that's that's crazy. Well, with that said, I mean, I'm I'm curious to know what's in your collection. Obviously, there's a bunch of pieces you just showed me, but I don't know which ones are for sale, which ones are in your actual collection. So if you don't mind, just kind of walking us through your collection. I've toned down my collection to watches okay. that I really wear, you okay. know? So I, I, ha- I have two tiers. I have like, I, I call them in Spanish, my watches of, uh, that go to war, which are my Seikos, my, mm. my Seiko Patty, my Seiko Monster, um, you know, watches that, that I take to do anything and everything. And I don't care if, if they get scratched thing or, or, or whatnot. Cool. You know, All right. with them. But in, in my, in, let's say in my Sunday night going out collection, you know, I'll have like my, my Panerai, I have a Rolex date with, with a bark bezel. So when they ask me, oh, why, cool. why is that so special for you? I'm like, if you could show me another Rolex date, not a date, just another Rolex date with a bark bezel, I'll, I'll, I'll give you $10, you know, because <laughs> there is no other one. There, I've never seen one. You know, I've never seen another Rolex date, 34 millimeter, not the 36, you know, because 34, there's plenty with the bark bezel and, uh, and uh, obviously presidents, there's plenty of them with, with the right. bark bracelet and the bark bezel, but a solid gold 14 carat made for the American uh, market for, uh, with, with that bark bezel. I've never seen it. So that Rolex is very special to me. And I have a 1970s NOS Omega Nothing fancy, just a square fourteen karat gold watch. Obviously, cool. you're gonna you're, you're gonna notice that I'm way into gold watches. So yeah, um, uh, you know that that's that's a that's a piece that I I absolutely love. The other day I was buying and selling. I bought a uh, Balmaser Kaplan. I I just had to keep it. You know the oh, cool. quality the quality of Balmaser it's beyond Rolex. To be honest with you, the quality really? of those watches wow. is just amazing. The uh, the, the movement—it's just an ordinary Volvo seventy-seven fifty, but it's just okay. an incredible watch. You know, the bracelet—I think it's the most comfortable because everybody brags about comfortable bracelet. Omega has a comfortable bracelet. Uh, this one has a comfortable bracelet. The the Balmaster Kaplan with the metal bracelet—I think it's the number one bracelet there is. 
you know, and uh, and even Omega with their new Speedmasters, they just did a lot of links. They, they you know, they shortened the link and they, they did multi links. So so it would, it would be more comfortable with right. for the Speedmaster. Paul Monsieur did this in the mid 2000s, you know, multi link bracelet to be, you know, to hug the, the, the wrist just perfectly. You know, so that's another one in my personal collection. And I'm sure there's more, but I can't remember, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you have a lot, but that's cool. I mean, it, it's refreshing to hear different things in your collection. I know you mentioned the Seiko Patty. I've been following your channel for a while. That's something you got for Father's Day, if I remember yes. correctly. Yes, if I remember correctly, yes. And then I got another one for uh, for a birthday. But, oh, uh, cool, 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 cool. Yeah, but that, that Seiko Petty SRPA, I'm terrible with reference numbers. Terrible with reference number. <laughs> SRPA 21, I think. It's, it's, I think it's my favorite watch to do anything and everything with that watch. You know, That's it's a Pepsi Bezel, if I remember correctly, right? Pepsi Bezel. You know, when uh, th this watch is still from when uh, Seiko was doing things right. You know, <laughs> now Seiko, I think, are doing things extremely wrong. And Seiko is forgetting about the people that made them. You know they, they want to go more upstream, more upscale, and you can't get a you can't get an ISO diver anymore from Seiko for under what do you want to say five hundred six hundred dollars probably more because now it's into the Prospect series, right? So it's, with it's the Prospect really series, yeah. So 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 you 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 can't get an SKX like you could like you could in the good old days for ninety five to one hundred and fifty dollars, brand new. Yeah. You know, that's what they, that, that's what they would go for. And that's what made Seiko, you know, those watches, those Jingle watches, those watches that uh, everybody loved to criticize, but everybody wore. <laughs> yeah, no. I mean, look, so, and, and there's a reason why Seiko is doing this because of the popularity of Seiko, right? Of and I mean, you go on YouTube, put Seiko, bunch of videos show up, your videos, my videos, everybody's videos, because everybody praises Seiko, or if they're not praising it, they're talking bad about them, but everybody's talking about them. Right. About Seiko. Sure. So, yeah, I mean, I, I it's an interesting thing that's happening. I mean, even with Grand Seiko, right? I mean, back in the day, they nobody knew what Grand Seiko was. But now prices yeah. are getting crazy for Grand Seikos, you know? So, yeah. Yeah. I you know, know, man. And I don't I don't get it. I mean, I am not a Grand Seiko fan. If I got a little ladies watch here, it's a little ladies high beat, which oh. is a Grand Seiko. Okay. That's all it is because it's a high beat movement. Oh, well, uh, right here, you're not going to be able to see it, but right here in the bottom, it says high beat. And I, you know, I, I can't remember what frequency it beats to, but uh, I think it was 36,000. It a might be. It, it might be, you know. So it, it's basically a Grand Seiko, but they were nothing back in the day, you know. And this new watch hype made Seiko, but Seiko is, is trying to become some somebody. And in, in, in a different community than the community yeah. that made them, you know. Yeah, no, I I agree, I agree, and and uh, you know, I, when I got my Seiko Prospects, the SPB one for three, I absolutely love that watch, right? So it's over a thousand bucks, and the beautiful very, but expensive. It is, it is, and the very first one that I got had a QC issue. One of the hands, and I don't think I ever talked about it, but one of the hands, the minute hands had like some little cutout or something and you could see it and especially if you get the macro i mean you could see it a lot but even with the naked eye you could see like a little trash in there and it just didn't sit well with me so i exchanged it and the new one is pretty good but i'm like yeah a thousand bucks for a seiko like that kind of hurt but i mean it's a nice watch you know and and something i really like about that specific one is that uh they put this hardened material on the on the case and the bracelet and honestly i've worn the crap out of that watch and it doesn't have a lot of scratches. And this Black Bay, I hardly wear it. And it's you could see the scratches on it. So I'm like, uh. <laughs> yeah. But so, let me ask you this, Miguel. Do you have a cheaper Seiko, a uh, less ex least expensive Seiko? Yeah. Uh, yeah, for okay. sure. Well, I have my my I have the SKX. I have this okay. guy too. I took it off the bracelet, but Sarb 033. Absolutely. Oh, the Sarb that's a classic. That's a I have super this. classic Sarb. So do you feel the difference between this one and the thousand dollar Seiko? Honestly, I I feel the difference, but not a not a six hundred dollar difference. Not a six. <laughs> that's what I was gonna. No, is it a six hundred dollar difference? No, you know, no. Even the packaging was like not yeah. that great, to be honest with you. Um, would I pay more? Yes, and that's why I did. Uh, because the dial is incredible and the the movement's a little better. Obviously, six R thirty five with the seventy hour power reserve. 
Um, bezel is actually really nice, but yeah, it is, it is, it is up there to be honest with you, but I just really like the 62 MAS case so much that I was like, I want that watch and the sizing since it's a little bit smaller, it fits my, my smaller wrist, like really nice, but it's, it's, uh, I mean, yeah, man, it's the, 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 the the SPV, I think it's, it's, uh, it's definitely cool. The Willard, I mean, I know they're going for over a thousand bucks now, so it's hard. One of the things that that Mark from Long Island watch was telling us, cause we asked him about Seiko. How do you feel about Seiko going up market? He's like, no, 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 no. Let me stop you there. He's like, they're not going up market. They're correcting their pricing. And I'm like, how so? He goes, if you go and look at the MSRP for all the old watches, Seiko 5, SKX, whatever, it was never what they were selling for. It was always more. But the reason yeah. they were going for so so little is because they flooded the market the, with a bunch of watches and gray dealers and this and that. So what Seiko's doing now, it's kind of cleaning everything. Of its, uh, every, the gray market up, according to him, as much as they can to correct the prices and bring them to what they used to be. So I, I get it, but I do think they're going a little a little too much. I mean, you, you can't much. recommend Seiko to new collectors anymore. Like it's no. not, I mean, it's you can, feasible. yeah. I mean, for the Seiko fives, you can, the, the Seiko KX or whatever they call yeah. it. But again, you get a hundred meters water resistance. It's not an ISO diver. So I mean, it's no screw more, down crown, no yeah. screw down crown. So, I mean, it's, it's a good watch, but it's not a great value. I mean, I saw sure. that the SAR 033 brand new, they're going for a thousand dollars right now. I'm like, Oh yeah. Oh yeah. What? How much? Are the, how much are the older ones going to? Not much farther, you know. They, yeah, they're, they're, no, they're, they're in the six, seven hundred bucks. Expensive. They're very I paid expensive. a year and a half. No, two years ago, I picked this one up for three fifty, pre-owned, about three fifty, three hundred and fifty bucks. And now they were already going up because it was discontinued already. But yeah. I, uh, I even thought that was a little up there. But I'm like, all right, I'm willing, willing to pay maybe yeah. four fifty, five hundred at the most for a SAR. But a thousand, seven hundred oh. bucks, no. <laughs> I just picked up a uh, Seiko Alpinist green dial, the original Alpinist, and uh, yeah, and th- th- you'll see it on my Instagram. And uh, I did see it, and I saw the price. Did, I was did, like, "Yeah, Fernando." <laughs> <laughs> and I, I'm not too far off from cost, you know, because yeah, I, no, I get it. I believe you. I, I, I want to make at least fifteen percent on everything because there's a lot of cost involved, you know. And but that's, that's nothing. Fifteen percent margin nothing. is nothing. But, and, and, you know, that's, that's one of the things that I've always wanted to do, you know, um, give people good value. So um, if I can NOP. go to work and OP, never overpay. And I said, on the last video, I'm going to put my money where my mouth is, but um, I, I want to give them good value and I want them to get the best possible watch for the best possible price. And, uh, th- and that's why I, what I do all the time, you know, like this one here, the, 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 the Seiko, I had to pay up for it if I wanted it. You know, other watches, sometimes I don't have to pay up that much. But most of the time right now with this crazy market, you got to pay up if you want it. But even paying up, I try to do my homework. I try to do my diligence and, and, and get them as cheap as possible so I could clean them, do whatever I got to do, calibrate them, make sure they're 100% running to put them back on the market at, at a great price. You know, yeah, no, that makes sense. Well, you you hit on a on a point uh, earlier. I don't know if uh, if you said it on the podcast or while we were off the podcast, but we were talking about vintage watches, and basically at one point when when I actually got it just into collecting vintage watches were crazy, right? I don't know crazy. if it was the Paul Newman Daytona that did it or whatever, but pr- prices were just ridiculous, right? Yeah. But with everything focusing more on the new market and Rolex, Rolex, Rolex. Is there good value to be had in vintage watches? And if so, uh, what what are some kind of brands that you recommend uh, for people to look at? Okay, there's great values right now in vintage watches, but it's it's a very dangerous market. Number one, if you don't have a watchmaker three blocks away from your house, vintage is out for you. You know, if if you buy a watch. Okay, let's say you want a Omega Constellation with a 505 movement. Okay. Ooh, you're going to pay over a thousand bucks right now, right? You're going to pay over $3,000 for that oh, watch. But, never mind. <laughs> but the thing is, you, you have to see how much a donor movement is going to be for that watch. I always said, 
if you go, if you like vintage, it's always good to have a donor uh, movement mm-hmm. for your watch because you will need it. Eventually, you will need it. I have drawers and drawers and drawers and drawers of donor movements. You know, okay. for, for 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 when I was doing a lot of vintage, um, but, but there are a lot of good value. Omega, I think it's going to be your number one value because you can get a solid gold uh, Seamaster 33 millimeter or 34 millimeter if you can live with that and pay around $1,200 for a watch like that. But if you think about it, a watch like that is going to melt. Melt means scrap. Scrap is like the double word in the watch market because a lot of watches have been melted. But it, it, you're protecting your money. You protect your money with gold. Let's say that the, that vintage Omega 34 millimeter, you have $600 worth of gold. So that means you're only paying $400 for the watch itself. Yeah. You know, so the worst that could happen if it breaks down and and it's too much to fix, take it take it to a, a jeweler and sell it for scrap. You know, when it gets it. unfixable, you know, where, where the cost doesn't meet the, when it makes no sense to fix it, yeah. you know. So so you only lost $400. What I'm trying to say is in the vintage market, it's still a great way to minimize your losses. In the new market, you can't minimize your losses because if you buy a uh, Zenith Defy, you know, that watch will drop 25% from the day you buy it right away. If you buy a Panerai, that watch will, will drop 60%. Yeah. You know, if you buy a, a Breitling, you know, you need psychiatric uh, evaluation if you buy one new. You know? so, oh, man. I mean, that, that's what I'm saying. There is nowhere to protect yourself when, when you're buying brand new watches. But in vintage market, you know, if you're smart about it, if you're patient, and if you look around, there is, there, there's plenty, plenty of value. Yeah. So what would you say to somebody? I know Hodinky hyped this watch brand a lot. Universal Geneve. They've been out of business for a long time. Obviously, a lot of things are probably obsolete, but they keep hyping it up. It's a great value. And this is what you need to buy. And it's a pole router and it has something to do with Gerald Genta. And I mean, I see all that. But what do you have to say to that? Well, here's the thing. You know, Hodinky, he sells watches. So he's going to... Up, you know, he's he's going to make a lot of uh, commotion about about anything he wants to sell, and he's doing it correctly because everything he puts up for sale, oh yeah, you know, it's it's done within an hour. You know, it's like Black Black Friday who dinky every every time he bring, he brings out a watch, you know, it's, there's people lining up, oh yeah, you know, through the door to buy the watch. Yeah, but, and, and probably a lot of them are resellers because they know it's going to sell out and yeah. they can just flip it. I'm guilty. I'm guilty because I bought <laughs> I bought two of the Alpinist. I didn't buy one. I bought two. Really? You know, the blue oh, yeah. one. The blue one. I got 809 and my wife got, I think, 620 something or something like that. You know, but we wow. had two and and we made more than a thousand dollars combined on those watches. No way. Wow. And and the only and we didn't we didn't put a price on them. We put them on eBay and we put them auction, started at 99 cents. We said let the market do what the market does. Really? So, oh man, you, that, uh, how that's brave. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, and and the, and the watches the last thirty seconds, you know, they were just jumping and jumping and jumping and jumping in price, you know. So so I'm wow. guilty of of doing what Houdinky did, you know, and um, and another another um, I, I know you like him, Tristano from uh, Urban Gentry. He was so big, or he is still big, but he was so majorly big uh, four or five years ago. If if he spoke on Friday about a Timex that I could buy for a dollar, two dollars, because that's what I would pay for Timex, vintage Timex. If really? he was wearing one, oh yeah. If he was wearing one, I would buy. I would go to flea markets. I would go to any anywhere I could find them, because I know Monday those watches that I paid five, six dollars would be selling for a hundred, a hundred and fifty dollars. Wow. Just because he's that, that was the power. That's you know the power of YouTube, um, that's especially crazy. back then. You know, and back then I'm talking about three years ago, four years ago. Well, I mean, you you have a, let's let's give a little background history here. So Fernando on his on your English uh, YouTube channel, you got about eleven thousand and change subscribers. Uh, something um, like that, yes. 
and then your Spanish one, you got over 60,000 subscribers. That's a bigger so, channel, yes. So we were having a conversation that whenever you mention something or recommend something, you notice that whoever you recommend typically sells out. That's oh, yeah. crazy. That is oh, crazy yeah. to me. The, the, the Latin America um, community is watch crazy. And this is why I don't focus all my effort on high end because I focus my effort on general watches. You know, I'll talk, I'll talk about a F91 Casio and I'll talk yeah. about a Tudor and I'll talk about a Rolex because I, I mean, I did it in English too, um, where I was on vacation. I, I was at my house in the center of Mexico, it's called Huascalientes. And I told my wife, let's go buy a brand new Rolex. And yeah, I, like, I saw that video. You yeah. saw that one? And yeah, I saw she's that like, one. She's like, you need a Rolex? That's local. I'm, like, no, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> that means you're yeah, crazy, no, no, by that, the way. <laughs> that, 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 that's what she said. She's like, do you need a Rolex? I'm like, no, I need a video. Yeah. <laughs> 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 because I had to make a, I had to make a video in Spanish or English for for a few weeks or for almost a month month and a half. I, yeah, you're like we no, I, need, out, I we, need content. I need content. I need content. <laughs> so we went out and we bought a Rolex, and it was a fun experience, you know. And um, must have been scary buying a Rolex in Mexico. You watching your back? It wasn't you. What? You, oh, it's it's just so incredibly like here, you know. People think that it's a different world, but it's it's just totally like here and. And in the video, you'll see watches. This was four months ago, I want to say, four or five months ago. You saw a Milgauss, green, uh, uh, green Milgauss. Yeah. You saw a 36 millimeter Tiffany Blue Oyster. Not the 41. Yeah. If, if, if you observe the video, you'll see a few two-tone, they, uh, not Daytona, two-tone sub submariners. And a whole bunch of datas, and and the one I bought, I bought a uh, thirty nine millimeter recently discontinued um, uh, OP. Damn. You know, I'm sure you so, flipped that thing real quick. Oh, I got back to Chicago <laughs> and I sold it with. <laughs> wow, yeah, yeah, I, I, man, I was, you would have gone for that Tiffany blue. Woo. Have you seen what they're trading for? <laughs> I, you know, I should have, I would have, I, I, you know, but you know, it's. It was just the content that I wanted to create that you yeah. can go to other places and, and find anything you want, you know, but, but, it, it, you know, as, as far as Latin America, they're going crazy for watches, everything cool. Mexico right now, especially it's a very, very hot market. Colombia is a very hard, hot market, all these other places. And, and not, I take care of the, um, um, the affordable watches. Okay. But if you see other major, major channels, they're they're buying Richard Mills down there. No, buying, really? oh yes. Oh, Wait, Spanish got, channels? Because I, yes, you need yes. to tell me what their name is. I, I, I will I, tell I, you I, what I, their names. That you know, and and you'll see you'll see big dealers coming back from Mexico. You know, buying expensive expensive watches. Wow. You know, so so that's the thing. Now we can't underestimate anybody. Yeah, man. No, the, the, the watch thing is, is getting crazy. I mean, when I first got into it, it was all about the hobby and loving it and all yes. that. But everything that I keep hearing now is about investing, 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 which kind of takes the fun away from it, if I'm yeah. being honest in, in, in a way, because sometimes when I want to wear my SKX, I'm like, man, I remember when I used to wear this and just, just my watch. But now knowing that they're going up in value and they're only going to keep going up in value. I'm like, I really, it can't be my beater watch anymore. Granted, yeah. they're not going to be worth a few thousand dollars. I doubt it. But still, even my Sarb, I used to just wear like whatever. It's all scratched up. And now I'm like, ooh, I better be careful with this guy. Yeah, because now, now between those two watches, you have over a thousand dollars. It's you know? stupid. I just, but, oh man. But remember when you bought them, everybody was uh, pooping on them. Like yep. the SKX, it's, it's just a piece of garbage. It's folded yeah. aluminum, blah, blah, blah. 7S26 and movement, can't whine yeah, can't hack it. Can't hack it, can't anything. And look at them now. And look at them now, you know. Yeah. Um, sir, the, the, the first generation of Orange Monsters, you can't touch them anymore. Oh, you know, the, yeah. the, these watches are astronomically expensive, especially... Yep. Especially if you've been in the hobby for a few years. This is key right here. If you've been in the hobby for a few years and you're used to paying $110 for a brand new SKX on eBay, and, and, and then you want to buy a new one and now you gotta buy you gotta pay four to six hundred dollars for a new SKX, you know, it's like what 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 am I doing? You know, yeah, they I mean a few minutes ago they were $110 brand new. 
you know, and, and now they're going for this kind of money. It's, it's unreal. Yeah, it's crazy. Well, hopefully it goes well for you, man. I'm, I'm sure you're going to sell you. the, the Alpinist and, and whatever. And everybody Everything listening. Sells. Yeah. Any, anybody listening, anybody watching this guy, is, he's, he's a good guy. Um, he's, he's been around the block for a long time uh, and he's on YouTube. You can find him everywhere, obviously. But if money was no object, right. And somebody told you, Hey, see, here's all the money in the world. Build a perfect three watch collection. What are you, what are you buying? What am I buying? I'm buying a vintage Omega Seamaster 300. Really? Buying, all the money in the world. It. You, you all have the all money the money in the, in the world. world. I have all the money in the world. I, I, I want to go back to the principles of watchmaking. You know, the principles of popularity. I don't want to go to what popularity made them now. I, want, I, I would want to go to where they started. You know, so I would probably buy a Paul Newman Daytona. You know, <laughs> probably buy that. And um third one what would i buy i don't know what the third one was but would be but those two definitely seamaster 300 you know with with the broad arrow um the, the very first one that came yeah. out in 1967 something you know and uh and and a paul newman daytona even though i'm not a rolex fanboy but <laughs> like i said it's what it's what made them what they are now you know and yeah. i can't think of a third one but i'll probably i would probably buy another seiko patty you oh, know, nice, they're, nice. They're, they're so good watches. I love them. I thought you were going to say like Patek or AP or no. Vacheron or something crazy. No, like the, that. The, those are watches to flip, you know, for me. <laughs> they, those are watches to flip. They're not watches to keep. I keep the old stuff. I keep the good, the, the stuff that I, that I really enjoy, you wow. know, and, and if I can't enjoy it, there's no reason in me uh, having it, you know. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Well, I've seen a lot of your videos old videos that you were a huge fan of like Lemania movements. Oh, uh, love right? anything with a Lemania. Love everything with an Angelos or, or a, a Minerva movement. You know, um, long jeans uh, with the ZN13 made the, the perfect, perfect, perfect uh, uh, chronograph movements. I'm a chronograph guy. So it's, I always love a good chronograph. I mean, so I, don't, it's the, I don't hear you talking too much about speedies, like vintage speedies and stuff like that. They're overhyped. I like to talk about watches that people can get their hands on. <laughs> okay. You know, if 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 the normal, if the average Joe can't get their hands on uh, on that watch, you know, it's it's something that's you know it doesn't interest me. I want I want something that you can enjoy and I can enjoy, and we could talk about it because there's I can't talk to a guy that has only Patex and only Richard Mills and only you know high end watches. Yes. I don't. I know nothing about them. I don't know what it feels like, you know. Yeah. But I see. But if I could, if, if I could talk with people within within my circle, you know, that knows what a Panerai, that knows what a Rolex Sub, you know, that knows what, um, you know, uh, uh, old uh, Angelos, uh, you know, so, something like that, you know, that, that's a conversation I like to have. But talking yeah. to people that are watch snobby, you know, that, that only talk about the uh, highest of the high, it, it, it does nothing for me. You know, I, I'd like to think I'm a down to earth or broke, whatever you want to call me, uh, watch collector. No, I mean, knowledgeable and you've been around the block. So it sounds like hype kind of turns you off uh, yes. and you kind of run away from from it because i'm sure you probably do like vintage rolex right and oh, yes. you like them a lot at one point but now what they are it just turns you off i i, I get it, it it makes no sense it makes no sense when 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 a defect starts to be um a plus you know when a spider webbing uh <laughs> oh, dial God. starts starts to cost it's you patina 000. fernando it's patina yeah. okay yeah, there you go. <laughs> it's over it's worth oiling. more <laughs> it's over oiling and it's over uh exposure exposure to moisture that's all oh, it man. is you know the uh, only thing the only thing that uh that, that i like when it patinas it's it's like a sunburst dial what, uh, oh, okay. or not a sunburst what, what when the dial just uh the colors just tone down you know, got it, I, got it. I, I love it when that happens, when the, when the dial's toned down and uh, no spotting, no nothing, you just a toned down yeah. dial. That, that I love when it used to be a black dial and now it's a brown dial. Yeah. That I do like, 
you know do you like the bezels fading like the aluminum fading bezels, bezels fade? i love fading bezels okay. too you know that's something that that re I, I really really like that you know because um i don't know that that does something to me you know and yeah. um yeah if you see in my back I, I have some bills and some coins those are the coins you're not going to be able to see them but those are highly toned coins which is patina oh. in the in the coin market you know so tone to me is it it's something that i really liked a lot you know? That's pretty cool. Uh, something I, I I absolutely love, and I love in my vintage uh, Speedmaster is the tritium when it turns that kind of creamy. Yes. Oh man, that's so cool! It's <laughs> awesome. It is awesome. Yeah, but but I'm I'm curious to know. So you've handled a lot of watches because obviously you sell them, you review them, you do all kinds of things. So can you tell me of a time that you got a watch that underwhelmed you when you got it? That you were like, oh, this is going to be good, and it was just so underwhelming. And then on the flip side you got it and you're like whoa this exceeded my expectations okay let me let me start with uh, the one that i thought it was going to be nice but it wasn't nice okay oh, the micro brands i done Ooh. two micro brands okay. and both of them were a piece of crap i think every single <laughs> micro brand on the market is uh it's worthless and not worth uh, to me okay not worth strong words to me <laughs> yes, and mentioning them so that so micro rents anything to do with micro rents, um, because they, they they start at a high price point and um, they do nothing for the collector. You know they do they do they do harm to the community with their high prices. If if they wanted to build a good watch, they would build a watch and and price it at, at you know at a very very reasonable price so we could check it out and then you know. They could have credibility that way. So, so paint a picture for me, just because obviously we've had a lot of uh, CEOs of microbrands on the show, and, ooh, and I'm friends with you got some. the wrong guy. Yeah, no, 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 no. And everybody has their opinion, but in your opinion, what is a good price point? So, let's say dive watch, 200 meters water resistance, NH35 movement, sapphire NH35. crystal, you know, sapphire. NH. Sapphire ceramic bezel, okay. uh, you know, uh, bracelet that's that's uh, all solid, solid links, solid end links, male clasp, mm -hmm. interesting packaging, and interesting design. Nothing off catalog, right? So something that they actually designed themselves. What would you recommend somebody pay for that? And again, it's not an investable item. It's just you buy it because you like it that. and and you like it, and that's it. You know, but don't think of selling it. Uh, so what's what's so a good so the company let, let's 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 see this uh, hypothetical so the company only designed it everything was outsourced uh, and, yeah 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 correct okay they, they, so yeah. the, the company only uh took a dirty and okay and i got a watch correct correct and, and they had dollars <laughs> there you go okay so a uh, good price point nothing over 200 dollars. really really got really. it wow okay. here it is Save money on the packaging because packaging it's only good for videos. When you so it could knock down three minutes of the videos. You want to make videos more than ten minutes, guys. So the, you know yeah. that way that way the algorithm pushes you a little bit more. But eleven minutes minimum. But packaging is good for two minutes of video. Okay, so save money on the packaging and the watch. Um, sapphire crystals are thirty dollars. So uh, you know anywhere and everywhere, and especially if you're buying hundreds of them. They're going to be around the $25, $25 range for Sapphire Crystals. The movements are going to be $35, $40 if you buy a bunch of them. And the cases and the manufacturing, you're going to be in it for like about $145 per watch. So I think if you make $75 per watch, you, you should be able to convince the community to pay you more. I'm not saying you're going to stay at $200. I'm saying... You're going to convince the community with a great value, awesome product for your second round or third round where, where you could come in and ask a little bit more from the community. But you're not, going, you're not going to try to take advantage from the beginning like they all do because the cheapest micro brand I see out there is four, four to $800. That's, that's the range I see them, if not more. Okay. You know, so fair enough. So, so manufacturing in house is big for you, but how many 
of those big watch brands out there don't really manufacture their own stuff and they get them in China and then they bring them in and assemble them. Cause we've heard from CEO yes. actually from uh, yes. Christopher Ward. I don't know if you know, Christopher Ward, we, we had yes. Mike twice on the show already and he's very transparent. He's like, look, you know, I can't tell you the name of the brand, but you guys know who it is. It's a big brand. We manufacture our cases and a lot of things in the same place they do, but their prices are crazy. And we don't charge those kind of prices. So, okay. You know, so they might be talking about long jeans. They might be maybe. talking about Omega. They maybe. might be talking about Le Chou. They, you know, something, somebody within the Swatch company, they might be talking about, but you know what? They earned that right. They earned it. They, Omega's, they, they've been in business since 18, whatnot, you know, so they've earned the right to do what they do, you know. Omega, let's say let's say he was talking about Omega, uh, hypothetical. You know, Omega has uh, retail stores all around the country. They earn the right to to manufacture watches the, the the way they do. You know, because they've been doing it forever. They 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 already gave us great value. You know, because even a few years ago, gray market would take would take all the overproduced Omegas. And so you, you could get a Speedmaster for three years ago for like about $3,100, $3,300. Wow. Dep depending where you would go, you know. So I don't want to say names of places or online places, but <laughs> yeah. that's what they would go for. Th 31 to 39, depending on which one you would, wa you would want. You know, so they earned the right to do that. Micro brands, they have not earned the right to do that. You know, they, that's what I'm saying. I'm not saying you're not going to charge more later, like Seiko is perhaps, like you know, like Seiko charging, you know, much more for their watches right now. But I'm saying, you know, do something for the community, you know, and then, and then when once they're established, then charge them. You know, Ming, we mentioned Ming before, and mm -hmm. Ming is a micro brand, but they 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 touch that watch. They they you know, it's hand polished. It's hand, it, the, the movement, it's, it's hand decorated. Every, everything on that watch is, is perfectly, beautifully made. And it's, it's not a micro band anymore. It's, a, it's an independent. It's, it's an a independent, total different story. Right. It's an in, but they became an independent from a micro brand. You know, but they, they, they earned the right. I understand. I understand. So the likes of like MBNF and FP Jordan, they're obviously high in your book. Like you respect those people. I respect oh, MBNF, obviously, you know, um, what, what he does and, and Jordan, I mean, there's, he's an amazing watchmaker, you know, yeah. Moser, incredible watches and Indep independence don't share my same, um, my same opinion as uh, micro brands. Independence are, they, they make a limited amount of watches they they really make their watches you know and um and they, they take care of customers but i'm not going to put richard meal here because he, they don't take care of nobody <laughs> but, uh, yeah. these other people, you know they, they they take care of the customers with the quantity they produce with the skews they put out because that's another way to uh protect your customers not having a thousand skews out there you know and uh and, and limited production, you know, limited production is standing behind their product. And that's what micro brands don't do. They don't stand behind their product. They just push it out there till they go out of business and they go out of business till <laughs> people are fed up. And then they'll just make another name, another drawing on a piece of paper and start a new one. Got it. I, I guess also the, the thing with Jorn and MBNF and those guys is that their prices really expensive uh and also getting them is nearly impossible right because they're hype pieces yeah. now so man but I they weren't at one time no you that, know you're right you they, are they right were, what? they were desirable at one point they made themselves you know they made themselves giving great value because jorn uh a few years ago i want to say eight or nine or ten years ago you, you could get a yarn at a great price you know and um and they work from, you know, from, from that point on. And you can get a yarn at a great price when they were making less watches than today. You know, wow. so. so Yeah, it, it, it's, it's all It's all about making your brand. Make yeah. your brand. That's what I'm saying. Make it. Got it. So let's go back to the question. So you, you told me what watches underwhelmed you, micro brands. But 
what about the flip side? Which watch did you get? And you're like, wow, this is incredible. The bomb and was the, the one bomb you're Oh, oh, Monsieur. The other day I did a review about a Long Jeans Hydro Quest. Okay. Hydro Quest. Long Jeans yeah. Hydro Quest, 43 millimeter, ceramic bezel. Um, mm-hmm. beautiful watch. Um, it it beat at 25,100 uh vibrations, which is uh, you know abnormal and uh just an incredible piece. And th- the retail on that watch was like fifteen hundred dollars. Right, you know the the full retail, and I, you could get them right now any, anywhere from eight hundred to twelve hundred dollars. You right. know, so almost new, but the quality, the quality and the polishing, it it was just an an incredible watch, incredible watch. So let me ask you something, because obviously you you know a lot about older brands and stuff like that. Long jeans, I know, used to be a big brand. They used to give Omega a run for their money Number and everything. But what happened? Because now, if you're wearing a long jeans, people go, oh, yeah. You know, they don't. Yeah. It's so a long jeans. Is... Yeah, it's a long nope. jeans. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Not, nothing major. Nothing major. And I have one here. It's a beautiful long jeans. Oh, uh, wow. Flagship. The back with the enamel. Look at I don't that. Know if yeah, the that back with awesome. the enamel. It's just a beautiful, beautiful watch. And uh, what happened to long jeans? The 80s happened in long jeans. You know, uh, technology. The quartz revolution, mm. and it, it was just a brand that that it they, they're coming, they're 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 coming up strong. You know, they're they're fighting for a spot. I've seen but, them. I've seen them yes. come up. Yeah, and and but the the price range they're fighting it's a very very saturated price range because you got long jeans, you got Rado, and especially like here in the, the United States. Only a few brands, you know, uh, of fluoresce like Lang Jeans. A few years ago, nobody knew about Lang Jeans here. That this was all in Mexico and South America. Rado, Rado was from Pakistan to China, Asia, Asia China. yeah, yeah, um, and, and Mexico, Colombia. That, but Rado here, and then Captain Cook came along, and Rado started to, uh, right, you know. But Rado competes with Lang Jeans. Oris, Oris is a monster. Oris is such a great brand, you know, and it's it's hard to it, it's yeah. hard to fight with Oris, you know. The the value they give you and and yeah. just amazing watches, amazing. Oris yep. is one of those brands. There I you know. go. Oh, you can't see yeah. it right here. Right there. Yep. there you Pointer. Go. This is uh, Pointer from day. the 60s, I think. So now you can't see it, but it's from the 60s. My mom gave it to me. So I put it on this bracelet, but beautiful watches, yeah. Great sure. watches. Great watches, you know. They've always said we're using Salida movements, and uh, we're not playing the ETA game. And they're all in-house. They're they're a small company. It's it's just a, a great company. So that's what happens to Long Jeans and uh, Swatch Group. I think happens to Long Jeans now. And <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. No, Swatch I, I think Swatch only cares group... about certain. certain yeah, things. Omega. That's their baby. Yeah. So. That, that's basically it. Yeah, man. So let me let me put you on the hot seat here with some quick fire questions. So I'll I'll, I'll do a few just because I'm I'm interested, and you don't have to elaborate. Just just give me an answer, and we'll move on. Uh, Swiss or Japanese? Swiss. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Rolex or Omega? I Omega. think I know the answer. <laughs> Omega. <laughs> okay. Um, Michael Kors or Invicta? Oof. <laughs> Let me do this. So you're saying Ross or, or TJ Maxx? Because it's either or to buy one of them. Okay, let's go, let's go in Victor. Okay. <laughs> let me let me see one last one. One last one. Uh, man, this is gonna be a tough one. Uh, quartz or mechanical? It depends on the quartz, but mainly mechanical. But okay. there's some awesome quartz. There are some awesome quartz watches out there. You know, got it. And by quartz, I mean I mean electric watches like the Acutron, vintage Acutron. Love those watches. Vintage uh, oyster quartz. Beautiful. Oh. I don't know if you've ever been inside of one of those. You no, know, but good luck getting one of those. They're hype. Oh, <laughs> oh my god. And, and every single one I've touched, they don't work, and nobody can take them. So. <laughs> <laughs> they look yeah. cool, though. They look cool. <laughs> it's not running, but it looks cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So swap them. 
So, you know what, let me, I want to pick your brain before I let you go, because obviously you're super connected with the, with the different market than, than the U S and Invicta people hate Invicta here in the U S obviously for many different reasons, whatever. But I noticed that in the Latin America, uh, you know, countries maybe, and I, I might be completely wrong, but maybe they don't hate it as much. Am I, am I wrong? Or do they still hate it as much? They they didn't hate it as much until I came along. So Fernando, what I do you do? <laughs> there comes Fernando along. And I t- I tell everybody, Invicta's not a bad watch. You know, it's 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 not a, it's a zodiac is not a bad watch, you know, which are the same. Um but what I what I was seeing in those markets is that they would have 13 Invictus. They were, those markets, they, they, they would buy a watch box and they needed to fill their watch box. Mm. And, and what, what I showed them on my channel, what I was teaching, what I'm still teaching on my channel is that those, every single slot of that watch box is sacred. Don't just do it. Don't just, don't just have a body count for say, you know, Makes appreciate sense. it, love it. And, and even if it takes you 25 years to, to fill out that, that uh, watch box, make sure you do it with, with pieces that you really, really appreciate it and not rush into. And, and, okay. I, and like I was telling you, that, you know, I, like I say in my channel, buy Invictus, buy one. Just buy one. One is enough. You know, but if you have 13, if you have 13 $100 Invictus, now you have yeah. a launching HydroQuest. Right. You know, if you have a thousand uh, crap watches and, and then you're, you're hating the world because everybody says that, uh, that um, Oris is affordable. It is right. affordable. And, and they're like, but, I'm, but, but I don't have the money. You don't think you have the money, but you went out and you bought every single thing for two and five and ten dollars that, that right. you found. And, right. and you just crammed it into slip locks and, and now, you know, you don't know what to do, you know? So right. you did have the money. You just didn't have the, um, the patience the, to save up the for patience it. to save up for it. Well, That's you know it what is. it is, it's, it's, it's us influencers and, and blame ourselves that we put out videos with new stuff and we make things look cool. And obviously you got people doing really cool stuff with the way they talk or their videography or photography, or it's, it's influencing you, man, because it's, yes. it's just infomercials, infomercials. So it's like, so it is. honestly, like if you want to save up for a piece, like don't watch YouTube, <laughs> don't go no. on Instagram. Just, You're right. just, you know, just, just save up for that piece that you really want because it, it is really hard, you know, to, to save it up. Is a thousand dollars i mean it, it depends for some people whatever it's not but five hundred dollars is it's a lot of money for a lot of people and sure. and yeah no i i look at my collection too and i was going the other day and i'm like i have too many things a lot of things were given to me which i'm grateful yeah. for obviously for the channel but some things i'm like i did spend money on this and it was cool then but if i would have saved a little bit more now i'd have pieces that i could genuinely not just flip and retain and maybe give us an heirloom, but you could feel the quality difference between honestly, a Seiko and a tutor. Like it's, it's sure. Oh, it's, it's night and day. <laughs> night and, night day. and day. And it feels great wearing them too. You know, it, 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 it brings this sense of accomplishment that you're like, you know what? I've been working hard enough. I am responsible. I take care of my family. So now it's time to reward myself a little bit. Now there's nothing wrong with rewarding yourself with a hundred dollar watch. That's fine. But if watches is your passion, you know, and everybody you knows that a hundred bucks, go ahead, go big, go big, go home and just don't break the bank or don't buy it on credit and just buy something nice because this is men's jewelry. This is all we have. You know what I mean? That's how so, we work. That's, that's how we work. That's all we wear. But, uh, well, uh, you wear chains and stuff, but no, just, I don't know. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> no, you, no, you never I, do. Okay. <laughs> no, no, that, I only wear a watch. But you only wear on a the, watch. Uh, on the flip side of the token, on the flip side of the token, um, people that have watches, mid tier watches, Breitling, mm-hmm. let's say Panerai, let's say other mid tier, you, you name them, and they're sick of those watches because the YouTube is just pounding and pounding and pounding mm-hmm. on those watches, and it's a crap watch, and you shouldn't wear it. And what were you thinking? I tell people, you know, don't force yourself. Put it away. Put it away for six right. months. Don't look yeah. at the watch. 
Don't look at the watch. Don't talk to the watch. Don't think about the watch. You know, and and in six to seven months, you're going to take it out, and it's going to be the most amazing piece that you've ever seen. You know, and you know, don't, don't go, don't go and sell it and lose a bunch of money on it. You know, because because the watches, everybody's talking trash about it, and you don't like it anymore. So yeah. it works both ways. Don't buy a hundred Invictus, only buy one, and don't sell your decent collection because uh, YouTube is telling you or yeah. Instagram. Or, or they might say nobody tells me what to do. They're wrong. It's a lie. They're getting, it's a lie. They, they, they're getting that earworm every time somebody says something bad about a certain watch. You know, they're getting that earworm inside. So, you know, if, if you have that that brightling and you absolutely hate it, put it away and come back in six months. You'll see what I'm talking about. I mean, no, you're, it's you're, you're it right. Happens. It happens to all of us. Yeah, it happens all to all of us. And then seller's remorse is the worst because then at the oh rate that the market God. is moving, you're going to be yeah. like, wait, but I bought it for this much. Now it's this much. So it's yeah. great advice. Great advice. Just put yeah. it away. Forget about it. Or change oh, the yeah. strap. Start with the strap change. Something. Yes. You change know, the look do of something it. to it. But seller's remorse is, is terrible. You know, seller's yeah. remorse is, is terrible. I'll tell you a quick story. When I when I I bought a house in Chicago, I want to. It was 2010. 2010. Mm-hmm. I bought a uh, a Rolex uh, uh, Pepsi 1610, 1607. Mm-hmm. I can't remember the reference. I'm terrible with references. Terrible. But Rolex Pepsi transition of fat lady. I a friend of mine couldn't sell this watch for nothing. Box papers. Oh, I've it. heard this story. Yes, yes, yes. He couldn't, he couldn't sell this watch for anything, you know, and, and, uh, and this is, this is like, like, what did I do story? You know, I had to sell that watch. I, I gave, I gave him three grand for the watch. I sold the, the watch for five grand. Oh, you know, it, it, it was, a, it was a nice $2,000 profit. I'm like, I did good. I'm buying a house. I need the money. You know, I yeah. couldn't keep it. Uh, and and I've never been in the business of keeping watches. So come past a few years, past a few more years. This right now, this is a fifty thousand dollar watch, you know, oh that I sold god. for five thousand yeah. dollars. Oh but, my god! And, and that's not the only one. Like I've sold so many, so many uh, Omega Constellation pie pans uh, for eight hundred dollars to nine hundred dollars. That was the market back then, you know. Yeah. So so sellers remorse comes to me it's like i should have bought bitcoin at three thousand i should have bought bitcoin oh, at nine thousand don't even get yeah. me started <laughs> tesla <laughs> <Yeah>. amazon <laughs> but but you know what i got my two thousand chiba in news so i mean <laughs> we, all, <laughs> we 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 go to where we're not supposed to we'd all be rich we'd all be rich you know yeah. so and, and with watches too you know we if if everybody could time the market we would all be rich. But. Oh, we would all be rich, you know, but, but the, the, honestly, the core of watch collecting is buy what you like, but be, uh, be smart about it. Don't overpay. Sure. But, yes. but Hey, if you like an Invicta, if you like a, whatever the hell you like, just buy, go for it. It. buy but, it. But if you want to get people's respect and you're thinking that buying a, a Kenneth Cole or something is going to get you the respect, then do a little bit of research and maybe get yourself just like a, an entry level Seiko or, or Citizen yes. Eco Drive or something, you know, and then just something kind of like there. that. Oh yes, oh yes, you know, there's a lot of good watches out there, and that's what we, we could we could bash YouTube and we could bash Instagram that we're influencing and telling people what to buy. But also uh, on the flip side, there, there's some great resources out there. You could yeah. just uh, click away and and start typing on your phone, and you're gonna see what a good value is. You know, the other day I wanted a lawnmower, so I started clicking away and, and, mm-hmm. and reading reviews of lawnmower. Which one is better? Which one doesn't work that much? Which one is not going to be so hard for my wife to push around? You know, so <laughs> <laughs> so I got her a self propelled one. Yeah. No, so. There you go. <laughs> and, no excuses. I mean, no excuses. So, you know, <laughs> it, you, th- there's a lot of information out there yeah. to... Uh, I agree. At your fingertips. So you could use it both ways. You could use it to harm you or you could use it to benefit you. You know, it, yeah. it, it all depends. You know, so. I, I completely agree. It's a double edged sword, this whole social media sure. thing. But, but you know what? Thanks to social media, we've, we, we found each other. Otherwise, how in the world would you and I be talking? We would right? never know about any. We would you never know, know about this. 
Yeah. And, no. and, and, the, and the cool thing, honestly, the whole thing with watch collecting is not so much about the watches they are cool, but it's more about the friendships and the connections sure. and the like-minded people and the struggles of like, I mean, we just spent an hour talking about things that maybe normal people will be like, what are they talking about? Watches? Like watches? these little yeah. dumb things. Nobody even wears yeah. those anymore. Like what are they yeah, talking about? They don't about? have a cell phone. Right. No. But it, it's, it's, it's not about that. It's, it's a lot deeper no. than that. And if, if you're watching this or listening to this and you're new into the hobby, just be ready. Cause it, it it's gonna, it's gonna get hard. You're going to want everything. And everything one advice, one advice I have for you, anybody getting started into this hobby is take it easy. I mean, yeah. go slow, really learn what you like, what you don't like, what style, what size, what complication, because you could be like, oh, I love all chronographs. And then later on, you're like, no, I probably should have gone with a dress piece or a dive watch or field watch, whatever, you know? Sure. So. <laughs> sure. It's, it's, it's a hobby that there is a million different styles and there's a yeah. million different brands. And, but like you said, first of all, buy what you like. You know, if it's going to bring a big smile to your face, yeah. buy that watch. But it doesn't matter what I think about it because it's all subjective at the end. It you is. Know, it is. Yeah. Buy what you like, buy what you love, and, and you know, buy where you're going to be able to enjoy. And, you know, if you're going to buy a watch to uh, keep it in the safe because you don't want anything to happen to it, you're starting wrong. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah. Or you're not a watch collector. You're an investor at that or point. You're, you're, yes. You're, you're trying to, uh, to, to buy something to make money, which there's nothing wrong with it either, you know, but, but to, I, I think that to make money in watches, you got to love them first, you know, then. Yeah. Yeah. Cause then the market is so crazy. Good. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Because the market is so crazy that if you lose money, at least you'll be like, well, I love the watch anyway. So I yeah. didn't buy it because of the investability. I bought it more because of the aesthetic or it just speaks to me or whatever, you know? So. And when you can buy a watch for ten dollars and wear it for a year and sell it for nine dollars, and you're like, I wore this watch for a year and it only cost me a dollar, you know, it's like th that's that's if you're doing it for investment, that's a great investment. Yeah. You know, and if you're doing it for whatever for, for whatever you're doing it, you know, when you get to wear something and you bought it so smart that you're only losing basically nothing on there and getting all your money back, so, so you could go buy something else. That, that this is a great hobby. I, I know no other hobby that lets you do this, you know, because cars, you need insurance, you need plates, you need this, you need so, right. so, so much other things, you know. Um, yeah, I know no other hobby like watches that gives you so much joy and there's so much to talk about. And, you know, they're, they're just, it's just a great hobby to be in. Yeah. And, and one last piece of advice or a little, little quick story before we, we sign off here. So my relationship with my dad is not great. Not that we don't get along, but we just, we just don't really talk too much, you know, and I never knew that he even had watches in his collection or even like watches. And um, so let me tell you a quick story. So we, we recently met up with my dad about a week and a half ago. He just called us out of the blue said, Hey, I want to, I want to hang out with you guys and go for dinner before Thanksgiving. Like, okay, cool. You know, he knows I like watches. I don't even think he knows I have a YouTube channel. I didn't really bring it up to him, but he knows I'm absolutely crazy about watches. And he's told me little stories. And he gave me two years ago his vintage Bulova Accutron uh, gold plated that he'd had from the 70s. And he bought, you know, uh, at a yard sale for a dollar and kept it for all these years and took it off his wrist when I asked him and he gave it to me. So that was a very special moment two years ago, nice. right? And it's still my collection. Um, so this time he actually came prepared and I didn't know this. He gave me, and I don't, I don't have a handy, but I'll make a video. It's a vintage Alsta. Alsta is a brand Alsta. that uh, is, they came out in the, in, in the movie Jaws with their dive watch, but this is a, a dress piece. But so that was cool. Right. But that was, uh, he didn't take it off the wrist. He had it in a little Ziploc bag. He wanted to give it to me. It was uh, again in his collection since like the seventies or eighties. And sure. he, he told me the story of how he got it. So that was pretty cool. But before we left, he, he told me, he's like, you know what? I've been forgetting to bring this to you. He's like, uh, so we're from Mexico, obviously. And uh, you're not my grandfather, but my great grandfather had a pocket watch. Uh, and I believe it was an Elgin. He doesn't remember, but uh, it was his. Then when he passed away or before he passed away, he gave it to my grandfather. My grandfather died when he was 33. Uh, and my dad was only seven years old. So obviously I never okay. met my granddad. So when he passed away, his sister, my grandpa's sister kept the watch and didn't tell anybody 
everybody. Then when my dad was old enough, a few years back when he went to Mexico to visit his family, his aunt came and said, hey, this was your grandfather's and it was your dad's and it's yours now. And it's a family heirloom. And he, my dad goes, he's like, I don't know if you even knew that existed. I'm like, I had no clue. He's like, so I have it with me in my possession. I'm going to give it to you. And I want you to, to inscribe it with your great grandpa's name, your grandpa's name, my name, your name. And obviously your son wants to give it to him. And it just, oh man, I got chills when he told me that. Cause I'm like, this watch is probably from the 1800s. I mean, it's been, it's been, it's old, you know, I I don't even know what it is. Yeah, Yeah. And it's so cool. So what I was trying to get at is if the thing about watches, I know they're hype and everything, but these things go back as a generational thing and sure. think back your father, your grandfather, your great grandfather, these things were tools for them. So I guarantee if you dig around or talk to your family, maybe you could uncover some really cool treasures, you know? So, Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And, and what your story tells me is that, you know, even though your grandfather, your great grandfather, your father, they were watch geeks like we were. You know, isn't that there, crazy there, it runs in my still, veins baby <laughs> but there is still the watch there's, there's still a story in the watch yeah that came down to you and, and there's so many stories like that you know because um that's like like we said before it's the only thing we wear you know and um you know it's it, it's what we appreciate it's what we appreciate what we love and i know my dad wore a watch for most of his life my grandfather as well you know and uh and, and though it's it's so easy to hand down a watch, you know, because yeah. it's it's something that you always hold so personal to you. Absolutely. And then when you look back in pictures, it's like, oh, there he is wearing that watch when he wearing was X, Y, and Z. He was wearing yeah. that watch. Now I have it and it's time to pass it down. These things outlive us as long as you take care of them, you know? So that's, As long as you take care of them. Yeah. yeah as long as you sure. buy spare movements on, on eBay. They'll keep <laughs> running forever. <laughs> and you have a whole drawer, drawer uh, full of them, just like Fernando. So anyways, Fernando, right. where, where can people find you? You mind sharing your Instagram and your YouTube? Sure. Instagram, I'm at Fernando. I'm, it's Fernando, I'll put it up on the name, screen. But we're missing an N at the end. It's fernando 7 h and uh, that's an Instagram. That's where you can find um, a, a lot of things uh, about me. Uh, in Spanish, Todo Reloj con Fernando. That's in Spanish. English, I'm revamping my English channel, collecting vintage watches. I know a lot of people would love to have that name on YouTube right now, but uh, I've, ha- I've had it for years and years and years now. And uh, collecting vintage watches is coming back. We're doing a lot. We're going to start doing a lot of... Um, a lot of fixing, a lot of working on watches, and and just just talking about watches. Not we're not a Rolex channel. We are a watch channel. So we're going to talk about anything and everything awesome. that that comes that comes to mind. Yeah, honestly, when I first discovered your channel, I fell in love with it because you were just real. You weren't about the hype. You weren't about this. You were just like, hey, I've been into watches for a long time. I actually yeah. work on these things and I'm, I'm looking at them for the for their face value, for what they have, what kind of movement, what kind of material. I don't care about what the market is dictating. No. I miss, and, and I love that, you know? So. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and there's, a, there's a, you know, every watch is a sweetheart. So that we could do, it, it doesn't have to be, uh, what do I say? Hood horology. Yeah. So, hot horology. Yeah. Hot horology, whatnot. You know, I can't yeah. even pronounce that. So uh, <laughs> just down to earth Mexican down here, you know. Th- there you go, watches. man. <laughs> and I'm, I'm, I'm so happy. You know, I've done so uh, almost 100 episodes and I don't think I've ever, number one, I've never done a one on one with another uh, person nice. from Mexico. So thank you so much. I hope everybody appreciated this this episode. This is really special. It's like talking to family right here because we obviously are we connect in a, in, a, in a different level, not just from, uh, from a watch perspective but we're the same nationality so it's really really That's cool right. but uh all right fernando well thank you so much everybody listening watching uh happy thanksgiving i'm going to try to get this out by thanksgiving so people could at least listen to it um and if you're outside of the u.s just just remember be happy uh and and just don't be a snob <laughs> and don't be a snob. Uh, don't be a snob don't be a snob collect what you like and as always stay humble <laughs>